What's going on everyone? And welcome to my review of Saw X or Saw 10. Now, first things first, I'm still sick as a dead fucking dog and I have been for the past six weeks, but I'm trying to get over it. So that's why I'm a bit quieter and mellower in this one. But um, yeah, it's a shame because this is just like a good hobby for me in October, I'm a big horror fan. All horror films start coming out around this time of year, like the, the, you know, the, the big ones of the year. You got Saw 10, Exorcist, Believer, FNAF, Thanksgiving, you know. So you've got all these films coming out and I want to be able to talk about them. Oh, you got Chucky season three coming out in a couple of days and I'm still slagging on the Chucky movies, but that's all right. We'll, we'll get through them eventually. It might be a bit slower than I anticipated because of this fucking sickness, but whatever. Let's, let's just talk about Saw 10. This won't be a very long review, but I just want to talk about it because... I really, really enjoyed it. So I, I heard about this film a long time ago. I, I heard that it was bringing back John Kramer. This is the 10th movie. John Kramer died in the third movie. I kind of laughed a little bit. And then I realized that it was being directed by Kevin Grutet, who directed Saw 6, which I actually quite enjoyed. But then he directed Saw 3D as well, which is one of the franchise's low points. As soon as I heard that, I was like, no, no, this isn't going to be, this is not going to be good. Then I read that it was set between Saw 1 and Saw 2, where terminally ill John Kramer travels to Mexico for some experimental cancer treatment, hoping for a miracle. But then he realizes that it's all a big fraud by scam artists or con artists to just make money off of the vulnerable ill people before they die. He decides to turn the tables on them and show them a thing or two about loss. That kind of piqued my interest a bit. And they actually do mention that in Saw 6, which I find really interesting. They very me briefly mention in a flashback scene he wants um, healthcare to be able to try this experimental treatment, but they don't let him. But when I walked out of that theatre the other night, I will be fucked if I was not fully invested in that movie. It was legitimately excellent and I'll go as far as to say it's the only Saw film so far that's actually good. This movie takes the most interesting character of the franchise, John Kramer, puts him at the center of it and turns him from a villain into one of the most compelling anti-heroes of horror history. I mean, it seems so obvious in front of our face, like why would you not, why would 10 movies in you not have the sole focus of a Saw movie be on John Kramer and that's why I think Saws 2 and 3 are probably some of the best in the franchise is because they probably do focus more on John Kramer than any other movie. This one puts him right front and center. You get to really understand his methods, you understand his morals and stuff like that. It's a lot more clear in this movie because there are other movies when it's like he puts people in traps and you're like, D do they really deserve to go through this? They made like, you know, one mistake. But this movie, the people that he puts in the traps are horrible, just horrible people. And they deserve it. And it's like, yep, you deserve everything that's coming to you. Speaking of which, the traps are gnarly as hell. Uh, the one on the poster, the eye vacuum. Holy shit. I had a nightmare about it. I, I had a fucking nightmare about it. That's probably got to be my favorite saw trap in the entire franchise, if I'm, I'm honest, honest to God. That one is horrifying. It is absolutely terrifying and it is brilliant. There's other ones which the eye vacuum is the only one I'm going to mention because it is on the poster and it happens early on in the movie. All the other ones are brilliant too. I really, really love them. This film has moments of genuine emotion when you're legitimately caring for the outcome of it. You really buy his relationship with Amanda um, and you just, you really, really, you care for him. You, you want, you want him to be able to be okay, but you know that he's not going to be, and even though you still know that he's not a good person, he has so many redeeming qualities, and he's very compelling. He's the kind of thing, there's movies that are kind of similar. You have movies like Falling Down. You don't condone what they're doing, but you understand and you empathize with it, and that, I think, is really, really important to making a good anti-hero. Also, this is the funny thing, too, is it completely turns the franchise on its head, because the people that you'd normally be rooting for okay, the people in the traps are the people who end up kind of becoming the villains 
of the movie. And the villain of the movie ends up being the kind of person that you're rooting for with John Kramer. I found that really interesting and the character of Cecilia is a great villain. She's despicable, she's disgusting, and she's horrid. Also, this movie, I really appreciate how it is. Most of the film actually takes place, like most of the second half of the film takes place in a pretty limited location and it works wonders. There's no convoluted cop plot or anything like that. There's nothing really overly absurd about it. Um, it's just, it's a really, really good, it's, it's a great kind of just come down and for the franchise. It's very much more just isolated and secured and I don't know, I think the limiting of the location just does it wonders. And the twist, at the end, I'm not going to say anything, but you know, this, the part of every Saw movie when you have Hallows that playing, yeah, this is good. It works really well. It's not like, you know, as mind-blowing and confusing and ridiculous as some of the other ones, but it just makes sense. I didn't see it coming. It all works in retrospect. It's not like, you know, Saw 1 when you watch it and you're like, this is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen. That you're actually watching this and you buy it. You really get into it. And I love that. Now, there are some negatives here. I do think some of the characters don't meet the fates that you would expect or want them to. And that's kind of a bit of a bummer. Plus, there was something kind of weird with Tobin Bell's voice. I don't know if it's just because he's getting older, which I'm sure it is, but his voice was definitely, it sounded a lot more modulated than everyone else in the film. All the men that she you picked John Kramer? Please, don't hesitate. But you know, those are just kind of things that happens when people get older. And also, I will say that the very final scene is a little bit abrupt of an ending. It kind of just happens in the credits roll. Now, without spoilers, there is a post credit scene which kind of reclaims that little bit of like, oh, I wish there was a little bit more. But it kind of did feel as soon as the credits rolled for the first time, I was like, really? That's, that's the only way it's going to end off? But the post credit scene is fire. And for a Saw movie that is about two hours on the dot, I loved it. I was so impressed. It has heart. It has gore. It has great characters. It has an interesting plot. It really makes you think. And it all just comes around to a mostly satisfying conclusion. It's just those few little things that just don't quite gel perfectly for me. But other than that, this movie was absolutely brilliant. I'm going to give Saw 10 four stars. Guys, thanks so much for watching my review of Saw 10. I'm sorry about my voice. Um, I'm going to have my Child's Play 3 review up very shortly as well. And I'm going to sound the same because I'm going to record them both on the same day. So apologies for that. But anyway, I'll see you all later. Bye.